right. This is Mehdi and Angelina. Today, I'm having this fireside chat with Mehdi about the recently very popular on top of the new search GPT from OpenAI. So this new tool promises to revolutionize the way we find and interact with information online. Combining the power of ChatGPT, we're already very familiar with the real-time access to the vast expense of the internet. So make sure you stay till the end. I'll, I'll be the moderator. Mehdi will be my guest on the show. Let's dive in. My first question, Professor Mehdi, what is Search GPT? Basically, Search GPT is nothing but just using Chat GPT plus Search. So simply, it's very similar to Perplexity or Google, right? So even now, Chat GPT lets you search the internet. When you ask a question from Chat GPT, if it doesn't have access to real time data, it will just go and search the web and uses the result of the search to answer your question. However, I think the Search GPT is a completely separate project that they want to introduce to people. And at some point in the future, I think it will replace the current Chat GPT. You think it will replace Chat? I think Why? so. I think one of the reasons that they introduced that as a separate product is perhaps the user experience and the UI that currently ChatGPT has, which is very limited. It doesn't let you easily search and interact with real-time data. It doesn't give you any follow-up questions, things like that. So ChatGPT, based on the blog post that OpenAI has shared and a couple of very short demo videos, it seems like it's just very similar to perplexity, where you ask a question and then it will give you the answer. Uh, it will cite the answer uh, okay. using the references that it's using behind the scenes. It has better UI. Uh, you can even ask visual questions when you ask uh, search GPT, apparently. But in a nutshell, it is very similar to perplexity. Right. And even okay. Google. Um, Google also does the same thing, however, in a very limited way than perplexity. And we all know the reasons, mm -hmm. but yes. No, we don't know the reason. Maybe we can touch upon that later. But in a nutshell, it looks like Search GPT is just Chat GPT 2.0 with maybe better UIs, maybe better online searching capabilities. So based on very limited information so far, right? What kind of features of Search GPT stand out to you? It because you cannot try it except for maybe <laughs> very limited beta testers. But based on the videos that they have shared, except for the UI, which is uh, prettier than perplexity, perhaps, I haven't seen anything unique about that. Again, based on the videos, you ask a question, it will search the internet, and then based on the search results, it will answer your questions and reference um, the, the answer for you. But what I have read is that when they are searching the web, because right now when you want to search the web, you have to use some APIs, right? You have to use either Google or Bing API. If you want to index the entire web on your own, I don't think that a lot of companies have that capability, including perplexity. I think uh, they are mostly using a, a, either Google or Microsoft APIs behind the scenes to be able to access the internet and get the content. Then they will scrape the content from the URLs and digest that, clean it, and then use that to answer the user question. And I think ChatGPT, OpenAI, or Search GPT will, will do the same. However, I think they are capable enough and I think they have enough resources uh, money-wise to be able to, at some point, index the entire internet and use that. Yeah, I wonder how Google feels, maybe. I hear huge competitors are, are up and coming. I think one of the reasons that Google ha uh, haven't done that yet, like introducing a tool like Perplexity or even Search GPT, is that they are a very trustworthy source. When you want to do search and you want to make sure about the, the quality of the search and all that, you always go to Google. And I think I read it somewhere, one of the VPs at Google, or I think someone at Google mentioned that even if they introduce or bring out like a new product, something like perplexity, where you just search and get answers, if even 1% of their responses are not accurate or mm. bad, then they will lose a lot of trust from the users. That's why I guess they are very conservative and they don't want to do it at this point. Uh, and it 
obviously gave this opportunity to Perplexity and other similar companies, even OpenAI. At some point, I think Google will do the same thing, just like search GPT and... Maybe they're already doing it. But, but you're speaking from the, their perspective, right? The builder of these things. From the user perspective, the question is, do you want Google to change? Uh, I actually like Google as is for now. I, I think I use both. I use all of it, chat TBT, Google. I don't want to completely lose Google. And imagine if Google becomes perplexity tomorrow morning, I'd be shocked. <laughs> I, I don't want that to happen. Yeah. One of the good things about Google is that when you search, in many cases, it doesn't give you the exact answer, maybe some snippets, but typically the URLs, right? The pages that it gives you, it is, they are very reliable. And mm. the good thing is that if you want, most people don't, but if you want, you can like always go to next pages and next pages. Yeah. Perplexity, when you ask a question, it tries to find, I don't know, top five, six, seven most relevant results and then try to give you answer. But what if you don't want them? right? You want to go a little bit further. It's I hard know. to do that in perplexity. Personally, I use um, Google all the time. I have used perplexity a few times, but for me, it doesn't have any use, to be honest with you. I mean, when I want to search, I'm looking for really a lot of technical things, yeah. even if general thing. Perplex doesn't have that kind of information yet. Let's say flight information, a lot of information, things like that. If I want a tutorial, that kind of a stuff. So my to-go search engine is always Google, has been and will yeah. be. I haven't used Perplexity and I don't think that I, I will actually use it. You, you mean Google as it is uh, today, right? Google as it is today and if they will add similar features like perplexity or search GPT, I don't know, follow-up questions, which they do have right now, right? If you want to like exactly get the answer to your questions, mm -hmm. um, then they are doing it now, but maybe they will improve it, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, therefore, Let's... Google is the search engine. Is it to go, yeah. you know, go yeah. to search engine? Yeah, me too. I, I do feel these uh, options satisfy different needs, right? As you mentioned, if you're looking for tutorial type of explanations, I do think ChatGPT is better comparing with like perplexity. If I asked the same question on perplexity, Gemini, Google, ChatGPT, Meta AI, what else? Claude, uh, right? Anthropic. Yeah. I think the best is still ChatGPT. Claude may be a, a good alternative for search and discovery. I feel Google is still the best source of information for search and discovery. And it gives you the option of you can check uh, all the way to page 100 if you want, right? So it, it doesn't limit the answer to only top five, top K results. Mm -hmm, That's exactly. a limit for the AI driven search engines, right? The, speaking of that, uh, I'm curious, what do you think if these AI driven uh, search engines becomes more prevalent and people just want to use those instead of, instead of the traditional Google, uh, how, how will these search engines impact SEO? I think SEO is something that Google invented, right? They try right. to give the best user experience in terms of the relevancy of the results. So they came up with SEO or search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. So the thing is for perplexity, I'm not sure even if they use their own sources, uh, let's say they go and search the internet using their own, I don't know, index the internet and then use it. I think they are relying mostly on Google and Bing to get the results. So whatever SEO results come from Google, they are using the same thing. They just simply try to digest the results and then generate um, an answer, right? Mm. Um, search GPT. So the thing is, because Google is in this position where it has the entire internet, essentially. Mm. They have this capability to, to implement SEO and other mechanisms. And SEO is like a ranking method to rank the web pages that are most similar to users' queries. And OpenAI or Perplexity, if they want, they have to implement a similar approach to ranking the search results. 
if they want to have their own in-house approach to search the internet. I think OpenAI relies on Bing from Microsoft. So Bing is do the heavy lifting, right? They are doing the search, the internet, get the results and all that, and then search GPT, probably use that. All of that is just my speculation. That's my understanding yeah. because as I said, indexing the entire internet is not something that everyone can do except right. for just a few companies, including Google and Microsoft, then I don't think that it's an easy job to, for other companies to do, including OpenAI, Perplexity, and other companies. Uh, so you mentioned about we're speculating, we're taking wild guesses how companies like Perplexity is doing a search behind the scenes. So can we take it one step further and show our audience why we're making such guesses? Let's do a quick search on both. Like news. All right. So this is perplexity. Okay. So if you want to search for real time, right, they will do the search uh, behind mm -hmm. the scenes. For instance, which country? Uh, the Olympic game? Yeah, which let's do Olympic games. Country is the first rank in Olympic 24. So this is the results. Nicely mm -hmm. formatted in a table. So if I ask the same question, yeah, GPT, you can see that it is actually searching the internet. So even now it does that. However, right now it just simply just tells you this, right? Yeah. Maybe you can see the references. So it is not well, as comprehensive yeah. as perplexity. Yeah, you can see that the first news coming from Bing.com. Oh, is that a search? Maybe that, that just means that they're searching using Bing. I think so. Yes. yes. Okay. Because if you click on it, it will just open that. So uh, it comes to, to Bing, right? Right. Yes. And if you ask the same question from Google, then you can see it brings uh, the table. Yeah. This is so the how it works at Google. Everyone you know, knows how to do it. Perplexity is a little bit better for this question, you can see that they put the results in a very nicely formatted way. I think it comes from the source. Mm. Like NBC. So the first news coming from NBC. Is that the same as uh, Google? Maybe that's a, a way to... It comes from CBS News here. CBS, okay. So yes, here they have the table. So, so they could be using the uh, Google API and then do a re-ranking potentially? I don't know. My guess is that I don't think they have indexed the entire internet. So they need to use a third party tool or API. Google, Microsoft, perhaps DuckDuckGo. There are just a few sources to search the internet. And I think that they are doing that because web pages constantly change, right? It's not that they are always the same, especially for the question that I just asked. This is something that constantly changes. So I think they need to somehow access the or do a search in real time but for some questions wikipedia pages for instance and they are not as constantly change and they can initially if someone asks a question they use a search api and then they will get the url and the content then they can probably save it into some internal database and then later on if someone asks the same question they use their own sources but for many use cases I think that they are using Google or Bing mostly. Yeah. But again, I don't know the details. This is just my, my guess. Okay. So based on so far what we're talking about, we feel search GPT based on our limited information is awfully similar to perplexity. Based on the video, it looks like it's similar, yeah. but the demos, search GPT is prettier than perplexity. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. It's very similar, but OpenAI seems to be prettier than perplexity. The UI, right? This is just the UI. UI. And this is just very limited. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And the search engine behind the scene, our wild guess is still using the traditional search engine APIs such as Google or Bing, right? And then the large language model potentially are doing a lot of the post-processing that to make it easier to consume for us. Yes. Yeah, sounds good. This is our wild guess. Looking forward, what do you think is going to happen to perplexity? I don't know. I don't have the crystal ball. 
even from the beginning, I guess they knew that Google, these companies are going to have similar products at some point. So the competition is going to be even uh, more than before. I don't really know. I don't know what happens to perplexity. It has millions of users per day or per month. Active users are using perplexity, but for me, I barely used it just a few times. Mm, yeah. It didn't yeah. give me any extra added value. So, yeah. All right. I guess it's all about your workflow, whatever you need, right? Whatever you need exactly. and then develop like what your go-to tools that can satisfy your needs. Maybe we're not their customers, but they have their own unique set of customers. Are, are we for will sure. Keep watch, yes. Yeah. We'll keep watching this field because we're, we're active users for search engines, search APIs ourselves. So we're looking forward to see more advancement in technology in search. Right? Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you next time, Mehdi. Yeah.